You know, everyone likes to get letters, but here at HBO, we really like it. You see, it's the best way we have of keeping in touch with you. Your ideas and opinions help us decide what to show on HBO. And the more we know about you, the better we can serve you. At the same time, we want you to know more about us. Now, for years, HBO has been receiving and answering letters from subscribers all over the country. Now we've decided to start answering them here on HBO Mailbox. I'm Mason Adams, and every once in a while, we're going to take a few minutes in between programs to share the letters and answer the questions that come to the HBO Mailbox. All you have to do is send them. If there's something you want to know about HBO, just write. We're ready for anything. We'll tackle tough questions about HBO and our programs. We'll tell you anything you want to know about the shows you loved and the ones you weren't so crazy about, the shows you saw or would like to see. We're willing to take on any subject, from the technology that brings HBO into your home to Hollywood trivia. Heck, we'll even take criticism. You see, we want to hear what you have to say. So do write to us. The address is HBO Mailbox, Room 1615, Time and Life Building, New York, New York, 120. Believe me, your letters do matter around here. For instance, not long ago, HBO got a letter from Catherine Majalka of Shirley, New York. She said that she'd read an article in her local cable guide which implied that a scene had been edited out of the film An Officer and a Gentleman when it was shown on HBO. She wrote, how dare you take it upon yourself to do this editing? I don't care one iota which particular scene it was. It was the principle of censorship at work here. Mrs. Bajaka was understandably upset. And so were we. We hadn't edited the movie. HBO never edits its movies. But we wanted to set the record straight. So we called our local cable guide and found out that they had, in fact, printed a misleading statement about HBO's editing of the film. But we also found out that a clarification was printed in the following issue. Well, Mrs. Majaka, we're glad you wrote to us. And you can be sure that HBO never edits any of the films we show. So all of you, don't be afraid to tell us what's on your mind. <laughs> Who knows, maybe we'll see your letter up here. If you have something to say about HBO, anything at all, just drop us a line at HBO Mailbox, Room 1615, Time and Life Building, New York, New York, 120. We're looking forward to hearing from you. And you can look forward to hearing from us on HBO Mailbox. Back with his own unique brand of comedy, pointing out life's little absurdities. He's George Carlin, taped live at Carnegie Hall, next on HBO. Would you get this out of here, please? Take them out of here. When the worst that could happen, happens. Somebody must have seen something. Yes, yeah, somebody must have seen him, and we're going to find them. We've uh, never had a child this young disappear without a trace. First, you cry for help. I know how you feel. Don't tell me how I feel. You felt what I feel, you'd be screaming. Then you fight the doubt. Has your son ever run away before? Before what? Alex is gone, and he's not coming back. Because the only hope left is to go on believing. When are you going to realize that this obsession of yours is doing you damage? Long after hope is gone. When I can't stand anymore. Judd Hirsch, Kate Nelligan. After three months, I'm up to my armpits and... Psychics and gypsies and Jesus knows what all. I'm, I'm getting nowhere. Without a trace, every mother's worst fear is this mother's reality. I want my son back. Tomorrow on HBO. I live in my home to find the dream. Art Long is a singer who just can't seem to get any respect. Not from his fans. <laughs> not from his wife. You've never made a dime at your music. It's turned into some sort of damn hobby. Not even from his kids. <laughs> but Art Long has a plan. I think I found a way to pay the bills uh, that I can live with. You beat up a guy. And if you win, you win $5,000. <laughs> 
four guys. I want you to know exactly who you're fighting and what the hell you're getting into. I know what I'm getting into. I'm fighting rapists and axe murderers. I won in Fort Worth. I go to Detroit. I fight for $100,000 and maybe the chance to go on to become Miss Universe. And if he's tough enough... You can't beat Truman Wall. He just might make it. I'm going to finish this thing the way I want to finish it, not you or anybody else going to tell me how to do it. Saturday on HBO. Rome, 1944. A group of Italian patriots plot an audacious attack. Their target, a column of German SS troops. No one would dare attack German troops. The German answer was reprisal, 10 to 1. Reprisals, General, punish nobody except the victims and their executioners. 32 of our men are dead. That means 320 attacks. Kappa. You will make up the list. In the true story of the day that followed, two men who could have been friends... We have a great deal in common, Father. ...face a life-or-death choice. You have made up the list of the men who will die. I'm a man, alone, weighing nothing in the scale of things. And you cannot stop it, Father. Do something, Colonel. Delay. Destroy it. Richard Burton, Marcello Mastroianni, Massacre in Rome. Man can choose. Choose, Colonel. Sunday on HBO. I'm terrible Tim Witherspoon. 17 and 1, 12 knockouts. Come March 9th, I'm gonna be the next heavyweight champion of the world. Friday, March 9th, there's gonna be one hell of a prize fight. My name is Greg Page. I have 23 and my record is 23 and 1 with 18 knockouts. I will be the heavyweight champion of the world. March 9th. At stake is the WBC crown Larry Holmes surrendered. Larry wouldn't fight the number one contender, Greg Page. I'm number two contender, he wouldn't fight me. It's a world title with a proud past, held by only a few of boxing's greatest. It's my turn. Now the two toughest contenders duel for it, the best in their division. I think the heavyweights is the tops. Greg Page versus Tim Witherspoon. One of them is destined to be. It's over, and we have a new heavyweight champion of the world. Watch it happen, live here on HBO, Friday, March 9th. New York City, the backdrop for a drama filled with suspense and courage. It was a typical morning for a working mother who kissed her young son as he went off to school. Alex waved goodbye to his mother, walked around the corner, and vanished without a trace. Kate Nelligan portrays Susan Selke, the young mother, and Judd Hirsch is Al Manetti, the police detective assigned to find the missing son. What was the boy wearing? Do you remember what he had on? What was the boy wearing? Oh, he had a brown corduroy hat on, a dark blue jacket, pale blue scarf, and blue running shoes. Mrs. Selke, has there been anything bothering Alex lately? Uh, any quarrels or uh, spankings or anything like that? Nothing has he ever threatened to run away before? Kate Nelligan's performance in Eye of the Needle brought her to the attention of producer-director Stanley Jaffe. In Kate Nelligan, we have a woman who gives to the audience the tenacity that that role absolutely needed. She realizes that unless she keeps it together, that the whole investigation will fall apart. Somebody must have seen something. Yes, somebody must have seen him, and we're going to find them. But if you open this up to the press right now, you're going to get the crazies and the haters and the people who have those funny dreams. I don't care if I have to talk to every lunatic in the city. Somebody has seen my boy. She's a smart woman. And she's, she's, she's not calm at all. But she's someone who can master herself. Master herself to make herself do things that other people can't do in the same situation. My wife saw her in the news last night. She said she was so calm, she was almost too calm. Oh, man. That's what that looks like, calm. Yeah, right. There must be something weird about these people. They must deserve it. can happen to them. can't happen to me. You know something? My son is almost exactly the same age as Alex. A cop can be on the force for 20 years and never have any case come close enough because it doesn't uh, match anything in his life. This one does. He starts to think about his own child being uh, kidnapped and what he would do. And I believe he starts to think about it for the first time. Now look, Mrs. Selke, I've seen a lot of custody fights, and they always begin with, my husband wouldn't do that to me. Now look, I know how you feel. Don't tell me how I feel. You felt what I feel, you'd be screaming. I keep thinking I would have given up. I don't know how she keeps going. 
in, I, in utter isolation, too. It's not as though everyone around her is cheering her on. Everyone's telling her she's crazy. The child is dead. Give up. Move on. And she refuses to. And she's not crazy. Just enormous courage. I just think you should consider therapy. Why? So you can feel better. I don't want to feel better. I want my son back. Can you hear yourself? I don't want to feel better. Can you hear what you're saying? Isn't there something useful that you could be doing? Oh, shouldn't you be at your pottery class or something? God, what business is this of yours? I'm your friend. I love you. And this is not about me. This is about you. When are you going to realize that this obsession of yours is doing you damage? When is it going to stop? When I can't stand anymore. When I can't stand anymore. And not one minute before then. Without a trace, Mark Stanley Jaffe's directorial debut. As a highly successful producer, his films have shared a common theme, his love and concern for children. Without a Trace is, is not about missing children. It's not intended to be a polemic. It's intended to be an examination of people in a time of crisis. And the center of that attention is the mother of the child who's disappeared. Try 50 pounds. We're looking for a six-year-old. Without a Trace, this month on HBO. Change off.